that was interesting for a okay, so we'll make a start now. Thank you for coming along to the FOSS in Research Lightning Talks, which is hopefully going to be the first of two sessions of Lightning Talks we'll be doing today. Um, our first presenter, start when you're ready. Yeah, thanks everyone for coming. My name's Jeremy Murphy. This is my first ever lightning talk, so please be gentle. Um, I've done a bit of research uh, in the biomedical sciences and being a free software fanatic, that's I always tried to use it. This is my supervisor for my computational neuroscience uh, honours year. And he wrote uh, his own neural network modelling software called Parplex, which uh, if you're familiar with neural network modelling, I guess the main package is called Neuron, which I think comes out of Duke or Yale University or something. Um, but yeah, he decided to write his own, I think, because he wanted to have some particular parallel processing or something. Um, and it, it was open source, but I think I was a third ever user of it. So you can imagine that it still had a few bugs and... So even though it was open source and free software, because he hadn't actually put it on the web, or like on SourceForge or something, no one else had ever used it. So it was a bit frustrating. I spent a lot of my year finding bugs, asking him to fix them. Yeah, that was a bit annoying. I sort of, looking back, I wish I'd used, used Neuron. I would have had more confidence that it was, I don't know, that the main features would have been more reliable. Oh, I'm glad I put my phone on silent, it just rang. Um, and so for the plotting of the data that I got from that neural network modeling, I used matplotlib, which is a Python modeling library. That was pretty good. I didn't really know what else to use. Um, I'm not sure whether it's a MATLAB style one or whether that's something else. Maybe you know. So that was that project. Um, then I also did some QSAR work, which in pharmacology is quantitative structure activity relationship. So that's about, you know, you've got a, a set of molecules, a set of drugs, um, and you do some analysis on their structure. A lot of them have, and, you have, and they're known uh, biological activity, and then you've got a, a new molecule with an unknown biological activity, and you can make a statistical inference about what its activity will be, which is quite fun. Um, initially, I used this... I think it's free, well, I had like a demo version or something of this chem sketch software. Um, so just for drawing molecules and saving them into a, a file format. If I was doing the same thing again, no, yes. Um, I'd use Avogadro, which is free open source software. Um, for some of the molecular dynamics, we used Hyperchem which, well, just as an aside, is now available for Linux. But that's definitely commercial software. Um, and I think Avogadro actually has a lot of the features of Hyperchem now. Probably not all of them. Um, and I didn't have time to look up all the different free molecular modeling, I mean, uh, molecular dynamics software. Um, then, so yeah, in this, in this QSAR process, I sort of had to get all the drug structures as files um, and then run them through we wrote our own software just to actually do the the algorithm that is, you know, the the, the protected intellectual property. But I realised afterwards that a lot of it was published publicly in the literature, and so I made a a plugin for Open Babel, which is a program for converting between molecular file formats. And I have the feeling that no one will ever use it, but it was just something to do. Uh, and then we use Weka for the data mining at the end. Um, of course, I use OpenOffice, you know, for writing my actual papers and so forth. Um, and citation, I use Bebus, which is okay. I don't know. I, there are other things like there's something called Zotero for Firefox. I didn't have time to really look at it. I'm really interested to know what other people use for citation in free and open source software, because Bebus, it kind of did the job. Um, where is it? I had it open here. You know, you can, it's kind of biomedically focused, because you can do a search through PubMed. 
um, for what I'd be looking for. But yeah, it wasn't as great as, what's the big commercial citation package? EndNote, yeah. And that's my story of using FOSS in research. Thanks. Okay, so who is next? Oh, if you want. Uh, yep, uh, with the uh, open source um, uh, bibliography management, I've used um, Bib Synonymy, and then there's a, another program called Jabref. So you can just um, highlight the bib tech on the web. Okay, yep. Um, and then it'll just go straight on their server, and then you can sync it with your local uh, client. Jabref has a module that you can pull all the references down, and you can just tag them. So if you're writing a particular paper or there for your thesis, you can download a particular tag. Okay, uh, so we'll switch to our next presenter. Feel free to grab a lollipop or something like that from the, uh, from the front if you want. They've given us a whole bunch of food uh, for speakers to take, so no worries. Uh, go. Right, good afternoon everyone. My name is Conrad Sanderson. I work for a company called Nicta, and that's its uh, logo there. It's an Australian research institute, and what we do is uh, research in machine learning, artificial intelligence, computer vision, life sciences, etc. Uh, one of the labs is based at UQ, and um, what we're doing in that particular lab is working on surveillance, uh, or automating surveillance to be more precise. During our research, we were, we were doing a lot of stuff uh, under MATLAB, and then we try to use a bit of Octave. The problem with those two uh, approaches is that when you write stuff in MATLAB, if you want to get any speed out of it, you eventually have to convert it into, into some other language. And usually the choice is C++. The problem with this is uh, that you need to uh, redo a lot of the matrix handling. You need to redo a lot of the matrix, matrix decompositions, uh, handling of your own uh, memory allocations, deallocations, etc. We were actually quite frustrated with that, and we decided to build our own matrix library, uh, but not just your usual run-of-the-mill one. We use a lot of uh, template techniques in order to combine a lot of operations into one. And the end result is what you see on the screen. This is a project on SourceForge. The address is arma.sourceforge.net. Uh, this is licensed under the LGPL, which means if you want to use it in uh, commercials or commercial or proprietary programs, you're more than welcome to. This has had about roughly 17,000, 18,000 downloads. It has an uh, active community uh, of people contributing uh, bug reports and patches. If you guys are familiar with uh, LAPAC uh, or the linear algebra package, that's the, the standard, use or de facto standard, we provided an interface to that as well. Uh, and this also allows you to drop in high-performance replacements for LAPAC, and some of these include the Intel Math Library or the AMD Math Library. So, that's it. If you're interested, let me know. What about now? It's more a question of whether or not the people with the headphones on can hear you. Can the people with the headphones on hear me? No. <laughs> you ready? Um, Righto.